Yes. Good evening, everyone. Today is January 19th, 2022. We're convening a regular meeting of the Board of Education. It is 7 p.m. and we are in the uh, Baumgartner Auditorium. And Mr. Mucho, would you call the roll, please? Ms. Prowse? Here. Mrs. Schuchert? Here. Mr. Suchaki? Here. Mrs. Etter? Here. Mr. Davins? Here. Five present, none absent. On behalf of the board, I'd like to welcome all students, staff, parents, and interested community members to tonight's Board of Education meeting. The board values and encourages public comments on education issues. Anyone having an interest in the actions of the board may participate during the public comments portion of this meeting. Please identify yourself on the board sign-in sheet that I believe Mr. Young has in the rear of the room. A copy of the board meeting agenda is available for review on our district's website. Please silence your cell phones during the meeting, and would you now join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Young. Uh, I'm looking at our, our sign-in sheet for commenters, and no one has an interest in expressing public comments tonight, so I'm going to... I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. I need to, uh, firstly, I need to have a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Okay, Mr. Suchaki, motion, and Mr. Suchaki seconds. Any discussion? If not, let's proceed to a vote. Mr. Suchaki. Aye. Mrs. Schuchert. Aye. Ms. Prowse. Aye. Mrs. Etter. Aye. Mr. Dobbins. Aye. The motion passes 5-0. Now we'll move on to public comments. Mr. Young, thank you for recording that. There are no interested parties this evening, so we're going to move past the public comments portion and move to agenda item number four, which is the staff spotlight. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Evans. Thank you, Mr. Dobbins. I ask for the board's approval of this resolution. Whereas the Cog High School District has been fortunate to have dedicated staff committed to the mission of the district and whereas the addition of Hallie McPherson's presence at Cuyahoga Heights Schools has delightfully brought a whole new layer of energy and creativity to the Midland High School building and whereas Mrs. McPherson's wholehearted love and enthusiasm for her subject matter is visibly evident when she is excited and engaged in the art room and whereas Mrs. McPherson is kind-hearted, bright, and self-reflective as it is apparent that she constantly looking for ways to refine her strategies and deeply cares about the success of all her students and whereas Mrs. McPherson in her first year at Cuyahoga Heights has immediately engaged students by offering a very successful art curriculum as well as facilitating art club and whereas Mrs. McPherson willingly helps students organize a fall art show to serve as a fundraiser for two national conservation organizations and whereas Mrs. McPherson without hesitation immediately jumped on board to promote the school's annual holiday card by soliciting soliciting artwork from students and whereas Mrs. McPherson's passion is contagious, she is an excellent role model for students and an asset to Cuyahoga High Schools and whereas Becky Boytek, high school teacher, has formally nominated Hallie McPherson for her love that she has for the subject matter and she teaches as well as her positive relationships with her students. Therefore, be it resolved that the Cuyahoga Heights Board of Education congratulate Hallie McPherson on her January 19th 2022 selection to the Cog High School Staff Spotlight. I ask for approval by the board. So may I have a motion to approve the Staff Spotlight? So moved. Ms. Edder moves. I'll second. I don't think there needs to be any further discussion, so let's move to a vote. Mrs. Edder. Aye. Mr. Dobbins. Aye. Ms. Prowse. Aye. Mrs. Schuchert. Aye. Mr. Suchaki. Aye. I apologize. The motion passes 5-0. Congratulations, Ms. And Mrs. Mrs. McPherson is with us tonight. Mrs. McPherson brought her husband to you in the Cuyahoga Heights garb. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mrs. McPherson looks very young. I have not yet asked her for a hall pass as she's been walking down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're moving on to agenda item number five, uh, and that would be our recognition of students of the month for December 2021. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Evans again. And I'm going to pass it off to Mr. Janitovich for our students of the month. All right, as I say, every, every meeting that I do, this is my favorite time of the year, favorite time and opportunity to recognize um, all these students that, that are here today. I think everybody was coming today, um, so if, if not, then we'll just kind of recognize them. Um, but we have two months worth here, so bear with us. Um, but we got a lot of awesome kids that we're going to recognize here. So we're going to start off with sixth grade, our December student of the month, Victor Torres. Victor has demonstrated excellence in a variety of classes. Um, he is one of the mo most hardworking individuals in class and is always giving his best effort. He has shown a desire to learn, asks wonderful questions, and always has positive interactions with classmates and teachers. He has a huge heart and his kindness is contagious. Um, he says he loves school every day. He says he feels safe here. He loves the fact that there's two school officers in the cafeteria sometimes at lunch. Um, social studies is his favorite class. Mr. Brick has fun activities for social studies. Um, he allows them to ask questions and he asks good questions. Not sure what he wants to do when he grows up, but I'm sure after our conversation today, he's going to be successful in whatever he chooses and whatever avenue he mm -hmm. takes. But also he trains at Strong Style, where he does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, MMA, and boxing, which I think is super awesome and I can't wait. Hopefully one of these days get an opportunity to see him compete in one of those. Your December sixth grade student of the month, Victor Torres, congratulations. <laughs> Our January sixth grade student is Laurel Gosnell. Gosnell. a dedicated student who frequently does more than what's asked of her. She leads with kindness, she leads with compassion. She's reliable and often volunteers, and she also commits to what she signs up. And Ms. McPherson shared that she was part of art club and she was an integral part of that. Um, she said school is fun. Um, she loves school. She's involved in art club and theater. Um, I'm not going to ask you to re reenact your part that you're going to have in this production here, but if anybody wants to see it, I think it's April or March, you can come see, see her perform at that. Loves Mrs. Mr. Brick and Miss Wilson as her favorite teachers. Lo looking forward to the future to do sports at Cuyahoga Heights, swimming and soccer. Looks up to Lynn Emanuel Miranda, who is the creator of many um, musicals, uh, In the Heights. I told her I got to actually see him speak before I saw a production of In the Heights, and he did the opening number there. And Hamilton, um, awesome for that. She li likes him because he's creative involves everybody, is inclusive, and is just a fun person. When she grows up, she wants to be an entrepreneur, and I thought this was so cool. She said instead of playing games underneath her blankets at night, she's listening to business podcasts and learning. Um, says she needs to focus on improving services because that will be the key to success. And, and definitely she's going to be successful in whatever she chooses to do, and I'm excited for the rest of her time here at Cuyahoga Heights. Congratulations on being here. sixth grade. Grace Gallick, seventh grade. Grace is a student that exemplifies Cuyahoga Heights. Teachers say she's prepared and diligent, has a high level of thinking that just goes beyond her academics. They can see her in tough situations throughout the school day and is always thinking about situations from different angles. She's a rustler. Um, 
She demonstrates confidence through her rustling. She also trains for MMA competitions, and I was actually really excited, and I texted my wife, and I'm like, all right, I got two kids doing MMA and <laughs> jiu-jitsu and rustling. I got to sign up for this. She said no. Um, <laughs> but she loves Cuyahoga Heights. She says the staff and the students are her favorite part of Cuyahoga Heights. Uh, Mrs. Studier is her favorite teacher. Mace, math, fun, always in a good mood. Um, enjoys training. You know, she talked about you know, doing the strong style, doing the rustling, and wants to be a forensic scientist or going to law enforcement. Um, she's not sure exactly, but she did say that her training in MMA and rustling will help her in law enforcement if that ever came to be. Um, looking forward to next year, Washington, D.C. trip, um, which I explained I'm super excited for, too. Um, she looks up to her family and her sister. Um, she said her sister's always there for her and sets a good example, and she says that her family is just awesome. So excited to have her as our seventh grade student of the month. Congratulations, Grace. Seventh grade for January, Grady Boyert. No Grady? Um, real quick, I'll just kind of run through some of the things the teachers talked about. Grady participates in class and is kind and friendly to all, strives to do his best in all of his classes, very respectful to his teachers, has a positive attitude, um, a huge contribution to here at, at Cuyahoga Heights. So Grady Boyer couldn't be recognized today, but wanted to share some of the good things about him for our seventh grade January student of the month. <laughs> Daniel Danny Chahaki, eighth grade December. <laughs> All right. Teacher says is a stellar student who always has a contagious enthusiasm for learning, has positive conversations with peer and peers and gets along very well with his peers and teachers. He's accomplished many things at Cuyahoga Heights in his class, and his teachers are very proud of the hard work that he puts forth every single day. Loves Cuyahoga Heights, teachers are nice, favorite class is history, and, and like most kids, he's really looking forward to the upcoming Washington, D.C. trip, as I am. Um, he's involved in chess club. He swims for Seven Hills, says he'll probably swim for Cuyahoga Heights when he comes here in the future. I mean, when he comes to high school here, he's already here. Um, wants to go into the technology field in the future. Um, not sure, maybe a software engineer, um, but, but not sure at this time, but he has plenty of time to take advantage of the opportunities that Heights provides for him. Couldn't name one person that he looks up to, um, but he does look up to people that do the right things. Um, teachers can't say enough about him. Wonderful student. We look forward to the amazing things he's going to do here at Cuyahoga Heights. Congratulations, Daniel, on being this month's student of the month. <laughs> Mari Hopkins. Mari comes to school daily with a contagious spirit for all things Cuyahoga Heights. Contagious must have been a spelling word or something because everybody, everybody used that one, but it's so true. And if you know Mari, you know she definitely has a contagious spirit that just radiates from her anytime she's, she's around you. She's admired by her peers and works hard in and out of the classroom. Recently, she led a charge um, to get LED lights hung in some middle school classrooms. So taking on a leadership role, she's a huge asset to Cuyahoga Heights Middle School. Um, she loves the teachers and the people here are the best. PE with Miss Broski is fun and continues to do different stuff. Plays basketball, track, volleyball, doesn't really have a favorite, loves doing them all. Wants to go into fashion or hairstyling. Um, she said today there wasn't really much she could do for my hair and that's the truth. Um, but in the future, she said she, <laughs> in the future, she maybe wants to be a teacher if one of those two things doesn't work out. She says her teachers are cool and awesome, even though they give her homework. Um, and she loves telling jokes. And, you know, we have a couple of them that are, are pretty funny. Um, but, but she always puts me on the spot and asks me to tell jokes. So she keeps my, my joke game on point. So she always brings a smile to everyone's face. Congratulations, Mari, on being um, January's 8th grade student of the month. <laughs> All 
All right. We got ninth grade, and, and I actually flipped them just so I keep it in order. So January, um, Kay Davies. <laughs> Kay Davies, and, and just so I can, so middle school are, are typically nominated by the group of teachers. Um, high school comes, one teacher does the major nomination, and then it's kind of broken down. Other teachers jump in and say yes, 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 um, and we get that. So uh, Mr. Davies here was nominated by Mrs. Mason, um, his math teacher, um, she says he's a classroom leader who always participates in class. He's respectful, he's polite every day, he's eager to learn. Um, what does he love about Cuyahoga Heights? He loves the people and the teachers. Um, he came to us from, from Brexel this past year um, and says that Cuyahoga Heights is an easier place to learn. Just the way that teachers do things and the help and the support and just the environment um, makes it easier for him to learn. And he was very successful where he came from and he's continuing that success. Biology with Mrs. Wojtek is his favorite class. He says she's a great teacher and she's very helpful. Plays basketball and football here and likes to hang out with his friends. Um, and hanging out with his friends, I actually was excited this past Sunday. My son plays basketball at Broadview Heights um, for their rec center. And I kept seeing this kid peeking around the corner, peeking around the corner while I'm coaching the game. And it was Cade. He was up there with a bunch of guys just playing some basketball, just, just getting out there, making himself better. But he checked in on our game because, um, you know, he's just that, that great kid. Um, hopes to attend the CVCC for the sports medicine program. Wants to go into the medical field. Just goal is just to help people. Um, looking forward to you know the future with basketball with Mr. Tartera, sports in general, and just keeping getting better in all aspects of his life. Says he looks up to his dad. Um, his dad has a tough job, but does great work. Does a great job at work, but also at home. He's always there for him. He's always there at his games. He's always there to hang out with him. Um, so a lot of respect and love for his dad. Um, Kate Davies, awesome ninth grader. Looking forward to seeing what the rest of your career at Cuyahoga Heights is. Congratulations on being January Student of the Month. <laughs> Jimmy Blados. I saw Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy is December, um, ninth grade student of the month, was nominated by Mr. Patterson. Um, Mr. Patterson said Jimmy is the patience, is the definition of patience and empathy. Um, he's an incredible, incredible partner um, in science class and he's a friend to any that he comes across. He's a diligent worker um, with, and, and a very spirited young man. He said he's lucky to have Mira Cuyahoga Heights and at the end he put Jimmy rocks. Um, and, and I agree with that statement. Jimmy definitely does rock. Um, as a continuing theme that I saw with a lot of the high schoolers, loves the small school um, aspect of Cuyahoga Heights. Loves that he can get the extra help that he needs and when he needs it. Um, you know, he shared Mr. Patterson in physical science is his favorite class. He says Mr. Patterson helps make learning fun. Um, this year he's new to the bowling team. Um, he's a one-handed bowler. I didn't know there was a difference between two, but there's a one-handed bowler and a two-handed bowler. So it's easier to control with the one hand. Loves being a part of it, loves growing with it, and looking forward to continue to do it in the future. Next year, would like to go to CVCC, or in the future, actually not next year, in two years, would like to go to CVCC um, to go into their electrical engineering program. Wants to work some way potentially in the electronical field. Not exactly sure what, but it enjoys that line. Um, loves to skateboard outside of school goes to, to different skate parks. Andy Anderson, right, is, his, is the deck that he has and is his favorite skateboarder. Um, and he looks up to his father, um, looks at where he started from and all he's accomplished from his hard work and all the things that he's passed on to him has helped him become who he is today. So um, congratulations, Jimmy, on being ninth grade's December Student of the Month. All right, 10th grade, January, Sarah Keith. Sarah? No. Nope. Um, real quick, I'll just kind of run down. Sarah Keith was nominated by Mrs. Pavick. Uh, Mrs. Pavick says that Sarah has a positive attitude at all times, is focused on doing the best in class. 
um, and has continued to improve her grades at Cuyahoga Heights, is a tremendous classmate um, and, and loves having any opportunity to interact with her. Um, I enjoyed talking with her today, so let's give one more round of applause for Sarah Keith. <laughs> Kendall Leith. And once again, Kendall was nominated by, by Mr. Martin, um, top performer in, in, in her individual algebra class, does an amazing job answering questions, asking questions, taking on challenging problems um, that, that she faces, has a tremendous attitude, completes all assignments on time, and is just a complete wonderful asset to the class. So 10th grade's December student of the month, Kendall Leith. All right, 11th grade, January, Urja, Urja Chahan. <laughs> Urja was nominated by Dr. Roy. Um, she's currently taking multiple AP classes, AP US History, AP Physics, AP English. Um, but what he says is what sets her apart is her interactions with peer, her peers. She truly is a natural leader. Um, and he said that Cuyahoga Heights benefits from, from having her in class and, uh, as a student here. Um, and I couldn't agree with that anymore. Um, once again, she loves the small school, um, the personalized help. Everybody here is friendly. Teachers are approachable. What I also thought she was really cool is she said that younger students can actually go to the high school students, the older students, and, and get help and support. Um, they don't feel like they just turn them away or they're intimidated to talk to them. And that really speaks to to the leaders that our, our juniors and seniors um, show for us. Um, loves physics with Mr. Patterson. She's not quite sure what she wants to do for a college major yet. She's still investigating schools, um, but would like to go to a school outside of Ohio. Um, she's looking to start a cancer awareness club at Cuyahoga Heights. Um, and actually, she was, she was our representative, so there's a, a team out there called the LSS team, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and they have a student of the year program. So basically, one student from each school gets to, on their own, create a team to fundraise to raise money for um, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Um, at last check, in the nation, Cleveland was the third biggest region, so we're not by size-wise, we're not as big, but we're the third biggest in participation with the goal of trying to raise over $1 million for research, and it's all student-led. And Urja has created a team of students here. They're putting together opportunities for fundraising, dances, all these cool things, all to benefit um, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society um, and doing it all on her own time. So knowing that she, out of this, she wants to create a cancer awareness club, which I think would be awesome for that. Um, it just shows how, how amazing of a person she is. Um, she's involved in a lot, bowling, drama, National Honor Society, Spanish club, music, on and on and on. Um, she says she looks up to her parents. Um, you know, they, they worked hard, they came from India, they had a struggle, but continue to work and, and give her family and her what she has today, which she couldn't thank them enough for. So, Urja, congratulations on being an awesome student and being January's Student of the Month. Julia Bardzolowski. I butchered that, didn't I? I got nervous. I had I, I, I practiced it four times. I said it correct. No, I'm not going to be able to say it. Bardzolowski. Bardzolowski. My, my deepest apologies on that. Um, Julia was nominated by, by Mrs. Clay and Mr. Dippert. Um, for her upbeat personality um, that she comes to class with every day, every day, even in the media center when she goes in there for study hall. Mr. Dippert shares she's willing to participate in class, contributes to the class discussion, is, is, is a hard worker um, at Cuyahoga Heights and is always striving to do her best. What does she love about Cuyahoga Heights? The small community. Um, in, in her class, chemistry is her favorite class. Mrs. Wojtek um, does cool stuff there, learns a lot. She also talks about Mr. Dippert, um, you know, being enthusiastic and really excited when you learn something. She plays volleyball here at Cuyahoga Heights, which is awesome. Um, she wants to attend college. Um, she doesn't really know which college she wants to attend, but she wants to be an accountant or study business in some way, shape, or form. So we talked a little bit about some of those cool aspects. Um, 
she really looks up to her dad and Coach Mason, which I thought was really cool. Um, talked about, you know, her dad does a lot and helps people. He has his own business and he has his own nine to five, all while balancing working with the family. Um, and, and also looks up highly to Coach Mason for her pet personality, and she is just awesome. And if you know Coach Miss Mason, and Coach Mason has said amazing things about Julia um, and her leadership capabilities and what she's going to bring to the team next year. And actually, Julia is probably thinking this is going on long because she has practice tonight at 8:15. Um, <laughs> totally involved in all this stuff. So um, great kid. We're looking forward to the rest of this year and what she's going to bring for us her senior year. Congratulations on being this month's or December's Student of the Month, Julia. Congratulations. <laughs> To the seniors, Brady Pinter. All right. Brady was nominated by Dr. Roy. Dr. Roy shares that Brady is an outstanding student who has challenged himself academically. He has a high moral character and is always respectful, helpful, dedicated to helping others. Shared that this past year he was a senior leader on the golf team. He continued to work hard to improve, but which was also important and, and huge to Mr. Dr. Roy was that he also helped others. Um, he loves that Cuyahoga Heights is so small. Um, he gets to know everybody. Um, he's involved as he is the National Honor Society president, loves planning events for the school and the students and different things, and he has some things coming up that um, we're going to be putting into place. His calculus class is his favorite class. It's unique and different. Um, and Mrs. Zawadzki is a great teacher. When he gets to college, he wants to study computer science. He's kind of working through his list of colleges. Um, so I'm excited to see where he ends up choosing. Um, but I thought it was really cool because he says he wants to study computer science in college, but he wants to connect it to the environment or to create programs that can help people. Um, he said his parents are in the medical field and that has really shown him that the importance of helping people and also, when, when I talked to him, who does he look up to? He says he looks up to his parents. And I thought this was an amazing answer was, it really hit him this year with COVID, with his parents being in the medical field, how much they do, how much they help others, and how much they've actually seen in their work. But they're able to come home and continue to be great parents after having so many crazy, stressful things going on at work. So it just shows how reflective and, and amazing of a kid he is. Um, our 12th grade January student of the month, Brady Pinter. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, and Jacob Stalker. Jacob was nominated by Ms. Neville. He is cu curious, engaged, smart, open-minded, and always up for a challenge. Overall, he's a great guy. She said he is the kind of kid that makes me happy to come to school each day. Um, he said the best thing about Cuyahoga Heights um, is the friends, the kids, the people. You can actually just walk up to people and talk to them at school. He said Cuyahoga Heights is a respectful place. It is an open place where you can be yourself. Um, which I thought was awesome to hear. Favorite teacher, even though he's retired, Mr. Amari. Um, he loves the field of psychology, um, would love to go into psychology in the future. Still undecided about what specific field, uh, but he knows there's a lot of options and he'll, he'll discover that as he gets into, con um, into um, college. Music is a huge part of his life. We've had many deep conversations, a wide variety of musical selections, and I look forward to those um, as, as the rest of the year goes place. Uh, mostly 70s and 80s rock. Likes all kinds. His 311s is all-time favorite band. I was listening to it in the crib as a kid, and it was awesome, um, and it stuck with him. Um, he just bought a guitar, and he's learning how to play, um, so that'll be cool to hear him um, hopefully in the future. Um, you know, I asked him who he looked up to. He looked up to his dad. Um, he said his dad's pretty much broken every bone in his body, um, keeps going, never gives up, keeps working. He's a strong dude. He loves him, um, and he looks up to just that dedication from, from his father, and that's kind of, you know, you could see... Um, Jacob and the dedication he has to everything that he do, does. So congratulations on being our December's 12th grade student of the month, Jacob.
every time. We're going to shift to elementary and the difference at the elementary is that we only select two students each month. So um, rather than every grade level, we only have two per month. But we do have five students to recognize tonight because we have January, December, and one from November who couldn't make it in November. So we're going to start with our November student of the month, Anella Doan. Anella is a second grader. She couldn't be here in November because she was at Disney World. So I said, I guess I'll give you a pass. Um, she lives in Brooklyn Heights with her mom, Bernadette Cizek, and their little dog named Minnie. Her favorite subjects are math. I asked her why, she said, I've just always liked it, and PE because she likes the games. Outside of school, I asked her what she does when she's not at school, and she said mainly just go to bed because I have to get up so early, but also sometimes she plays soccer. Um, when she grows up, she'd like to be a scientist or a doctor. I asked her why she wanted to be those things, and she said because they make a lot of money. And I was like, yes, this is great. When I asked her if she knew where she wanted to go to college, she said somewhere in New Orleans. And I said, oh, why? She said, nice weather, have some family there. Um, and I asked her what she'd like me to say to her mom. She's like, uh, hi. So hi it is. And this is what her teachers had to say about her. This is from Mrs. Dennison, Mrs. Reaney, Mrs. Wallace, and Mrs. Faluda. Anella Doan has been chosen as a second grade student of the month for her responsibility, respect, and eagerness to learn. Throughout the school year, Anella has made learning a top priority. She is a valued participant in class and remains engaged in all parts of her day. Anella is a rock star in math and is able to apply critical thinking skills to new math concepts. She is a friend to all and encourages others to do their best. Anella is always willing to help around the classroom and takes initiative. We are thankful for Anella's hard work and perseverance she is caring, honest, engaged, and safe. Congratulations, Anella. Oh, Next, we have our December Students of the Month, and we will start with Olivia Gindelsberger. <laughs> Olivia is a fourth grader who lives in Valley View with her mom, Melissa, dad, Bob, sister, Sophia, who's in first grade, her cat, Raven, and her big dog named Storm. Her favorite subject, math, I asked her why, I enjoy it the best and PE because I love to work out and run. We have a theme going here. Outside of school, I, I already knew this answer. Soccer, soccer, she loves soccer. She's on the white caps and they won the golden cup in Florida over winter break. Mm -hmm. And she has, uh, when she's not playing soccer, she likes to play video games. When I asked her what she wants to be when she grows up, she said an engineer because she loves math and wants to build things. College, no clue. I said, that's fine, you don't need to know about college yet. Message to parents, she wanted me to tell you, I love you. And Olivia was nominated by Mrs. Bergen, Mr. Miller, and Mrs. Satterley. That's for library, technology, and SOAR class. Olivia is an extremely caring person. She is always willing to help anyone with anything. Olivia works very hard on her schoolwork and is an enthusiastic learner. She has the ability to brighten up any classroom she enters. She's polite to adults and peers in and out of the classroom. Olivia consistently makes good choices in all parts of the school day. We can always count on Olivia to be caring, honest, engaged, and safe. Congratulations, Olivia. Our second December student of the month is fifth grader Jimmy Mecklenburg. <laughs> the 
Jimmy lives in Valley View with mom Kelly, dad Jamie, sister Sophia, who's in sixth grade, and their big dog named Murphy. He likes math because he's always liked it and he really likes Mr. Taylor as a teacher. He likes PE because he likes running around with friends and playing basketball. Outside of school, I knew this answer too, hockey. He plays for the Parma Flyers and they just won a tournament this past weekend, so we got to talk about that a little bit. And he likes to play video games. When he grows up, he wants to be a professional hockey player. So I asked him if he was worried about losing his teeth. We just had this little conversation. She said, no, I'm a, I'm a goalie. I'm good. I'm like, oh, okay, you're good. I just think of hockey players with missing teeth, you know, so I, I'm glad you don't have to worry about that. And then he also said that the backup plan is to be a doctor. College, he said he wants to go to OU because he knows a lot of people who have gone there. And to his parents, he said, I love you. Jimmy tackles new challenges seriously, eagerly, and with a positive attitude. He shows perseverance in all that he does. He has a kind, caring, and friendly attitude that makes him a friend to all. Jimmy consistently makes good choices in all parts of his school day. It has been a pleasure having the opportunity to get to know and work with such a fantastic person, classmate, and student. Way to represent being CHES Jimmy from Mrs. Bergen, Mr. Miller, and Mrs. Satterley. Congratulations, Jimmy. And now we have our January Students of the Month. We will start with third grader Natalia Hernandez. <laughs> Natalia lives in Cleveland with mom Sylvia and dad Lalo. We went with that because I wasn't sure if I'd get the other pronunciation correct. So dad Lalo. Brothers Mateo, who's in kindergarten, and Max, who's three and didn't make it. He fell asleep. He fell asleep. It, it, this was too long for him. But Max is going to be coming to pre-K soon, I hear. So that's great. Also, she has a blue Australian shepherd dog named Duke. And she is the one who is in charge of him and gives him timeouts. Her favorite subjects, this is great, science, math, reading, and writing. She said, I just love to learn. I love mojo. I do brain exercises. Um, I read two chapters a day because I have to earn my free time. That's what she said. She figures out equations. She loves PE because she loves basketball, soccer, and sock hockey. Outside of school, she likes to stay up and use her tablet. She likes to take her dog out and feed him and watch to see if he chews up anything, if she has to give him a timeout. Played, she played basketball one day and it was bad. That's what she said. I played one day and it was bad. So we talked about that a little bit. It really wasn't that bad. She just felt like she didn't um, do as well as she wanted to. And on Sundays, she does gymnastics. When I asked her what she wants to be when she grows up, she said an actress, singer, basketball player, and gymnastics champion. You will be very busy. When I asked her if she knew what college she wanted to go to, she said, I don't know if college is for me. I'll have to talk to my parents. I don't want to go far away from home. And then we had a very long conversation with Elliot about how you could come home for weekends and all that. It was, it was great. I had so much fun in that conversation. To her parents, this is very thoughtful for a third grader. She said, I love you so much. You are very good parents. You take good care of me. And you respect us as children. I thought that was very sweet. Natalia was nominated by the third grade team, Ms. Akerley, Mrs. Collins, who's back there right now, Mrs. Raylander, and Mrs. Smith, and this is what they had to say. Natalia Hernandez has been selected as a third grade student of the month for exemplifying positivity, kindness, and an eagerness to learn. Natalia consistently shares her excitement with others and brightens our school community with a contagious smile and a kind heart. She demonstrates perseverance when faced with challenges, and she is determined to reach her fullest potential in all areas of her life. It is an absolute pleasure to have Natalia as a third grade student at CHES. Congratulations, Natalia.
And last but not least, January Student of the Month, Elliot Lunder. As I said, it was a great conversation when I had Elliot and Natalia in the room together. Um, Elliot is a third grader who lives in Brooklyn Heights with his mom, Janet, and dad, Brad. And then I asked him if he had pets. He doesn't have any siblings, but he has pets. So here we go, right, Natalia? Here we go. Arthur is a Dalmatian, a Dalmatian puppy with the nickname of Nutball because he's cute and crazy. Gertie is a chubby female Old English Bulldog who's four with the nickname of Big Chubby. Ripley is a very chubby French Boxer Bulldog. Charlie is a 10-year-old Mastiff. Harry is a Chihuahua who loves kids, and his nickname is Mean Jelly Bean. <laughs> I can't, I can't. He also has three cats, Georgie, the mouse killer, Silver, the old cat, and Mishy, the shy cat. Mishy? Mishy. The shy cat. He has three reptiles, Lucy, the leopard gecko, Ethel, the bearded dragon, and I asked him if he knew who Lucy and Ethel were, and he did. And they also, on the bearded dragon, put costumes like the bearded dragon Ethel was a witch and a princess, and he has a ball python named Sugar Rush. Wow. Very busy family with pets. <laughs> oh, there you go. I love it. I love it. His favorite subject is reading because he just loves reading. And his favorite essential is library, also because he loves reading. And he has a lot of books. Outside of school, he likes to work out, do CrossFit, and Total Gym because I'm going to be buff. That's right. <laughs> and then he also <laughs> likes, he's very shy. He also likes to lay in bed and play video games or play with his pets. I asked him what he wanted to be when he grows up, and third grade had just done a timeline. And so he said, did you see my timeline? Because he wants to be like Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, um, to help animals not be extinct. And he also said a scientist and a movie maker. And then we talked about Natalia's family member who makes movies, and it was great. College, he said, I don't know, I'm not gonna get out till like 2037. <laughs> I need to study science. And he's actually pretty accurate on that. I had to figure it out. I study science and anatomy of the human body, but I already know these things, some of it, you know. And then he started telling me all about something that is smaller in me than it is in him, because as you get older, it, disappears, it goes, gets smaller. Yeah, my immune system is not as good as his, and... That's right, my thingamajig thing is smaller than his. It's a message to his parents. I'm grateful for everything I got from you, and I love you. Mm -hmm. Elliot was nominated by the third grade team, Miss Akerley, Mrs. Collins, Mrs. Raylander, and Mrs. Smith. Elliot enters the classroom with a big smile and an open mind. He demonstrates his manners on a daily basis and is always respectful and kind in his interactions with others. He is conscientious and a hardworking student. His compassion for peers and others is valued and admirable. It is a pleasure to have Elliot as a third grade student at CHES. Congratulations, Elliot. Recognition. We have one more recognition, but I have to say this, right after this recognition, you can leave, but I told them I'd have you get them ice cream, so you might just want to make it in the snow. You know, just check, you know, make it. Thank you, Mr. Janatovich and Mrs. Houch, and, and, and parents, thanks for letting us double up tonight. Quite honestly, uh, my time as a principal and I was a superintendent, this is the best thing that we do, uh, recognizing our students, and, and our staff for their uh, uh, dedication, their achievements is really one of the best things that we do. This month, January, is also School Board Recognition Month. And Mr. Mucho and I and the staff would like to take a moment to, to thank our school board and recognize them for their commitment to the Cuyahoga Heights schools and their dedication to our district. Uh, we appreciate all that, all that you do as board members. And we have a little token uh, of our appreciation 
for the board members. And we're also going to make sure that Mr. Naaman gets in on the party, too. Uh, so, again, this month being... I'll walk around here. <laughs> <laughs> right there. They have names on them? Yep. Oh, <laughs> That would be me, and this goes way down there. Oh, okay. I think. <laughs> you think? I think that's how I mean, that's right. Gary's got two in front of him, so one's got to come back this way. I've got an extra one here. So we'd like to thank our school board for their dedication and the time that they uh, invest in, in our students. It's, it's probably uh, one of the most thankless jobs that there are uh, as a public servant. So uh, thank you to the school board. So at that, we're done with presentations. Parents, we... Thank you. If you'd like to take a few moments to come down and get some more pictures with your student down here, we're more than happy to. We're going to take a little bit of a break, and then we'll get back to our meeting. Uh, if you want to stay lovely, if not, we understand. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, we are now moving on to agenda item six, Trader's Business, Mr. Muccio. Thank you, Mr. Dobbins. A um, <clears throat> couple items tonight for approval. Um, item 6A, motion to approve the minutes of the January 5th, 2022 organizational meeting as found in attachment C1. Item 7A, motion to accept the bank reconciliation, financial reports, and payments for board review as of December 31st, 2021, as certified by the treasurer as accurate. Attachment T2. Item 7B, motion to accept the attached list of donations received through December 31st, 2021, as found in Attachment T3. Item 7C, motion to approve purchase orders over 5,000, as found in Attachment T4. Item 7D, motion to approve the revised student activity purpose statement for Spanish uh, Club on file in the Treasurer's Office, as found in Attachment T5. Item 7E, Motion to approve the following then and now certificate pursuant to section 5705.41 of the Ohio Revised Code. It is hereby certified that both at the time of the making of this con contract or order and at the date of the execution of this certificate, the amount required to pay this contract or order has been appropriated for the purpose of this contract or order and is in the treasury or in process of collection to the credit of uh, the fund free from any previous encumbrance. I ask for items 6A, 7A through 7E for approval tonight. So may I have a motion for approval of Treasurer's Consent Agenda? So moved. Mrs. Jackie moves? Second. Ms. Schuchert seconds. Discussion? Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, highlight a few items on here and not take too much time. Um, I know we're at the middle point of our fiscal year. It starts 7-1 and 6-30. Um, in front, everybody has our lead sheet, which is item T2D uh, in front. And the lead sheet has rows and columns, and on the top half are our revenues. The bottom half are our expenditures. Everything in green highlight is an estimate going forward uh, into the future. And if we look all the way on the right-hand side, column S, that's our beginning budget that we had for the year. So we can see what was certified as estimated revenue back on 623, 2021. And then we can see all of the expenses and what was temporary uh, appropriated as of 623-2021. Then in column R, over to the left, is the revised budget, and that's our November 2021 five-year forecast that we board approved 11-17-2021. And all those amounts in column R are in column N. So our budget right now mirrors our November 2021 five-year forecast. And I just wanted to touch base on the large items that we have. Um, if everybody's able to open, click into 7A, and we can look at our tax revenue. So T2E, if we click on that attachment, it'll open up. We may have to make it bigger on the screen mm -hmm. for everybody to see. Um, but in short, these amounts that we have here trace back to the lead sheet that we have. So if we were to look, um, for example, in July. So in July, on column B, row two, that amount is 1,251,000 even. And we can see on our tax revenue support sheet that it's on row one for class one and class two real property taxes. Mm -hmm. So everything that we have here on our lead sheet is further broken out in more detail on these other sheets that we have. Um, if we look at tangible personal property tax, row three, the amount in August, column C, row three on our lead sheet is $1,360,152. Mm -hmm. So if we go back to the tax revenue sheet that we have opened on our computer, we can see on row five in the pink section public utility personal property PUPP that the amount in August is that 1,360,152 um, and then we have our green amounts um, which reflect on our lead sheet row six property tax allocation and we haven't received anything until October came in the 218,238 if we look on our tax revenue sheet that amount the 218,000 238 is broken into three different amounts the homestead exemption 
and then the two credits, the non-business credit, which was formerly the 10% rollback, and row eight, the owner-occupied credit, which was formerly the 2.5% rollback. Um, where we stand now, if we look at that tax revenue sheet and we're going to scroll all the way over to the right-hand side, we can see the total and we can see the estimate in orange, and we're right at 49%, so we're pretty much spot on with what the estimate was for the five-year forecast of what we've collected so far. Um, our property taxes, class one and class two, which is row one in blue, were right at 50%, so our total is 4,388,484. The estimate is 8,822,648. So again, right at 50%, right on the mark. Now I have in January, February, and March, the white box is highlighted. That's when we anticipate we're gonna see money coming in. So every one of those white boxes that we see, that's when the money is anticipated to come in. Things change, it might get adjusted as we go, but uh, we're looking at January, February, and March to receive our tax advances from the county. Um, we have our row two, a box in March for our delinquent property taxes. Now, if we see the total to estimate, we're only about 15%. We do see more delinquent property taxes come in on that uh, second fiscal year settlement that we received from the county. Um, in pink, public utility personal property, we looked at the first amount that we received in August. If we look at our total all the way on the right-hand side of that tax revenue sheet. Um, we're right at 49%, so pretty much spot on right there, half the year. Um, below, for the green items that we have, the homestead exemption, as well as the credits, um, as well as house bill, uh, the phase out of TPP row nine, uh, that's down there. We're right at 50% for everything that we've uh, gotten to date. So um, we're right on track with our collections. You know, hopefully it, it improves more from our estimates, but you know, we're, we're right on track for where we should be. We're always looking at actuals to estimates as we go along. Um, so if we exit out of this uh, T2E tax revenue sheet that we're looking at here, and we addressed the majority of the items on the top half of the sheet, the revenues that we see. Let's look at a couple items on the expenditure side. So let's look at, on our lead sheet, row 15, which is personnel services. So if we open that attachment, that attachment's T2H. So if we do the same thing and open that attachment, we might have to make it bigger as we go. But what we have here, are essentially two sections of the page. The top half of the personnel services uh, support sheet, the detail that goes along with it. Uh, we have all of our different payrolls, so payroll one, two, and three per month. And then in the middle, we can see that we have 26 payrolls in fiscal year 2022. And the first payroll is 7-2-2021. The next one is 7-16-2021. Third one is 7-30, and so on. And then I have in the little box on top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to 26, so we can see where we go. So the top half just kind of shows how much for each payroll that we're spending. Now the bottom half of that sheet has that same amount from the top, but yet broken out according to object code. So everything that we track is measured in object codes that we have for the school district. Um, and it's split in two categories, certified and non-certified that we have. Um, so salaries, uh, 111 object code, row number one um, would be our highest line item that we have, um, which are, I think, teacher salaries that we have going forward. So if we look, and in the red, remember, we have different payrolls per month. So in December, it's half, you know, we're looking at uh, pretty much halfway right there. And we should be around 53.8. And we can look to see our percentage is 53.2. So we're right on track for where we want to be. According, and If we look at our overall total, we're looking uh, at the very bottom right-hand corner of the personnel sheet. The total is $4,862,360. And the budget is $9,077,919. So we're at 53.6, right on target for where we should be. So we're constantly looking at where the budget's at and where our expenses are coming in at, just to make sure that there are no surprises along the way as we go. Um, if we exit out of here, I just wanted to point out um, two more sheets on here. If we open the Employee Retirement and Insurance Benefits, T2I, same thing. So as we look at that spreadsheet, so the amounts in yellow at the very top, again, go back to our lead sheet. So every month, those amounts are further broken out here on these detail sheets so we can see exactly what object codes make up those totals in yellow, which again, go back to our lead sheet and 
those are the line items that we have for that employee retirement and insurance benefits. And we're tracking very good for where we want to be at uh, for this time. Uh, if we look in the top right-hand corner, our total is 1732585 and our budget's 3558984 we're actually under, we're 50%, we're at 48.7. So uh, we're tracking pretty good on our uh, expenses that we have here as we go along the way. Um, and the last one I wanna point out, uh, purchase service. Actually, uh, the second last I wanted to point out, uh, another one too. So same thing with purchase service. Uh, we have in yellow the amounts that are on our lead sheet and then we can further see you know, all the items that make up all those expenses as we go. And our percentage, top right-hand corner, you know, our total expenses as of December is 1,375,528. Our budget's $3,673,700, so we're at 37% of our budget. Um, it's kind of skewed in a way because we pay our giant ESC bill, which is approximately $3 million in quarters um, or thirds as they bill us. So, we're gonna see larger expenses come in January and then closer towards the end of the fiscal year that we have. But we're tracking very good for where we're at with our budget as we go. And all these line items are separated with object codes. So if anybody, you know, if we're curious on a 410 object code or 411 or 413, we have our titles and we have those sub accounts that correspond and go along with those as we go. Um, I did want to point out this next one for everyone. So if we open T2K, Supplies and Materials. So we have our same um, you know, logic in yellow, traces back to the lead sheet. But look at December. December has a negative. So we have a negative $4,926. That's because I'm starting to do chargebacks for our ESSER 2 grant. So if we were to scroll down to page four of six, and if we look at line 170, we're gonna see in the month of December a negative $19,512. And if we go back to August, we see a charge in black of $19,512. Mm -hmm. That 19,000, uh, Matt Young, you may have to help me out with this, was our Wilson language learning that we had purchased. Initially, we had coded that from our general fund, but we were always looking to charge it back to our grant fund, which is ESSER 2 uh, that we have. So right now, I'm starting to work on doing the chargebacks to ESSER 2. We've already spent all of our ESSER 1 on uh, personal protective equipment um, and supplies for the district. Now I'm working on accurately and record, you know, slowly going through and methodically doing individual chargebacks so I can request those amounts from ODE. So everything's organized as I go. Um, and we have about $289,000 worth of ESSER II. So we have our budget in CCIP that we've allocated and ODE has uh, approved. And now we're going back to um, recoup that money that was provided to us for ESSER II. So this is how it's helping out our general fund. So the items that we were purchasing that maybe the general fund would have had to have picked up we're able to charge those amounts to our ESSER II grant, which just further helps our general fund, as well as the overall district that we have going forward. So, um, Mayor, how much did you say we still are looking to use uh, the ESSER II? The ESSER II in total is $289,000 approximately. We're gonna use all of it um, as we go. We may not use all of it in this fiscal year, but the government's given us a certain amount of a certain time frame in which we can spend those funds. Okay. So we'll yeah, spend I was all. I if it's going to be till the end of the year if you had more. T we had more time. Right. There's no rush to spend those, and we have a we have a great plan <clears throat> in place that we're going to spend every you know penny that we've received in federal grants. So, um, and, and this is unique too. I was on a uh, webinar, an hour long one with uh, ODE and the State's office, and they were talking about grants and how nobody's ever contemplated accounting for grants in the way that's happening right now, how grants are you know, going further in fiscal years and we have to account for chargebacks that are going on. So everything that's taking place right now is completely new. So it's, it, you know, it's, it's a different um, you know, process as we go forward. So it's fun as we go. I don't know if budgeting and accounting is fun, but. Um, and for you maybe. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to point out two more things in here. Um, let's look at food service expenses. T2T. -T. If we open that spreadsheet, um, 
One thing we're going to need to do for our food service expenses, uh, talking with Matt Young, uh, Mr. Evans, Pam Mead, is we're going to have to modify our appropriations. So on that T2T uh, expense report, our budget is 335000 in the top right-hand corner that we appropriated. But with our free and reduced lunches now encompassing all of our students that we have, everybody's on it. So we're buying more lunches than we did in the past. So in the past, maybe people were packing peanut butter and jelly sandwiches from home to eat for lunch. Well, no longer, because everybody's on free and reduced. So everybody's getting student lunches, and they're not necessarily they're packing. they're eating two lunches. And they're eating two lunches, right? So it's not just one lunch, but it's two lunches. So kids that would have packed maybe normally aren't packing anymore. They're coming here and getting free lunches. And then not only are they getting you know, free lunches for the first one, but they're buying a second lunch. Because we can offer a free first lunch. That second lunch, then, we're selling. So we're just buying more uh, pizzas and more chicken nuggets that we had today, and more french fries that we had today, and more chocolate milks. Um, so our revenues are going to go up because we're getting more revenue from the state of Ohio. But also, too, our expenses are going to go up. So everything's kind of rising as we go along with that. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out, that that's something that we're looking at, and, and that's just an effect of everything going on um, that we see going forward. So we'll have that modification uh, to the Board of Education uh, next month or two months going forward. And then the last item I just wanted to point out here would be T2Y. Now, this is our grants review lead sheet. And I'll go into this in more detail. Uh, we'll have to make this one bigger, too. Um, so I, I'll talk about this again at a different board meeting, but just to touch base on this, and I really like how I set it up here. So what I did is I set up fiscal year 20, fiscal year 21, and fiscal year 22. So I can go back and look at prior fiscal years and what we did. This really helps with what's going on right now with the ESSER funds for coronavirus because those grants extend past one fiscal year, where in the past grants didn't. You had to essentially close those out with what's called a final expenditure report to ODE before you could start the new grant that you had for Title I, let's say, for example. Well, that's not the case with ESSER, so that's how it's kind of changing the game, that ESSERs are extending past fiscal years. So it's going to be interesting to see how you know, final expenditure reports are done, um, but there's just all new methodology that we have going forward with this. Uh, in the past, in fiscal year 20, we had three grants in the very top. We had Title I, Title IIA, and Title IVA. Then came fiscal 21, and we had all the new grants because of uh, COVID-19. So we had our first ESSER, ESSER one. Uh, which was 61000 Then we had below that Fund 510, which was the Coronavirus Relief Fund. Uh, it was about $37,000, and we purchased uh, laptop computers with that grant. Um, and we can see the other grants that kind of came into play. Now in fiscal 22, our current fiscal year, uh, we have different types of grants that came. We have a 516 um, American Rescue Plan IDEA Part B Special Education Grant. And that's $37,000 as well. And we have a plan for those funds as we go forward. So we just have a lot more grants um, and a lot more accounting for it as we go. Uh, so it's, I'm very, you know, particular about how I, you know, make sure everything's organized. And um, we can see before for fiscal 21 how we would make an expense and then I'd uh, make a reimbursement request in yellow. So we'd spend the funds and then I'd ask ODE for that reimbursement for those funds and they'd give us the money and we're back up to zero. So we're back even. Um, so we're doing that right now. Um, I've already done our Title I, our Title IIA. And the only grant really that we have to worry about at this time is Title I. We have to hit about 85% because uh, that 15% carries over essentially without any problem. If we go under 85%, kind of lose out. So we want to make sure that that one we hit our 85. All others um, at this point in time um, roll over if we don't spend it. Um, but again, we, we work very closely, all of our offices here, and we have great plans in place, and we already have the preliminary budgets approved in our safe accounts in CCIP by ODE. So we're good as we go forward with our grants. A lot of acronyms there. <laughs> so, um, any questions on any of these? Um, donations received. I uh, just want to thank um, Sarah Tuscan and that's for uh, their donation of $250 to the Lewis and Lillian Bocci Scholarship. Thank you very much um, to Sarah Tuscan for that $250 donation. Uh, purchase orders over $5,000. We have two tonight. We have 
um, the ACT Incorporated, and that is for 90 ACT tests at $60 a test, at, which gives us $5,400. And then we have um, Integrated Precision Systems. This is for three doors to conform with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, one door is going to be the high school back entrance. The second door is going to be at the elementary school kindergarten area. And the third door is going to be the elementary school back entrance. And that's $18,558.95 that we have in place. If you have any questions, we can. Is that just for the door? Is that for the that's, installation as well? That's the, <clears throat> that's the doors and the installation. Currently, none of our handicapped access doors function appropriately and haven't for well over 10 years. Mm -hmm. So this... Um, Thank Mr. Young for doing some work on this, um, and Mr. Zerbola and Dave Wallace helped out doing some research on this. So uh, this will bring our, our, our three uh, most likely accesses to by handicapped people uh, up to code on that. So. Uh, Item uh, 7D uh, for the activity purpose statement for Spanish Club. It's just a revision of T-shirts that the club would like to sell, $500 expense. So that's why we see that revision there. And item 7E, the then and now certificate, just deals with um, PAP positive education program. Um, the invoice 10-1-2021, uh, excuse me, the invoice is dated 9-17-2021, came before the purchase order dated 10-1-2021. Just was confusing with the vendor. You know whether it was Northeast Ohio, ESC of Northeast Ohio, that we were going to pay or uh, PEP. So um, as we worked with uh, special education, but we're, we're good with that. So those are the items I have for approval tonight. Okay. Thank you for that uh, background information. Uh, if there's no other questions. I guess we could proceed to a vote. Uh, Mr. Suchaki. Aye. Mr. Shukert. Aye. Ms. Prouse. Aye. Mrs. Zetter. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. The motion passes 5-0. Treasurer's discussion. Yeah, just wanted to touch base on three items. Uh, 9A, uh, discussion calendar year in review. Uh, first off, I would just like to thank Elixir Rodriguez and Kathy Martin. Uh, Elixir, our HR and payroll specialist, Kathy Martin, our assistant treasurer, for all their work on closing calendar year in 2021. Uh, they did everything. They did a fantastic job, uh, incredibly great. It's a large process closing the calendar year. So step number one. Uh, was processing 1099 NECs by uh, Friday, January 21st, which is this Friday. Uh, and we will mail out those 1099 NECs. I actually went to Neonet this morning and picked them up. So I, we have them upstairs in the treasurer's office. Uh, number two, processing W-2s by Friday, January 21st, which is this upcoming Friday. It will be mailed out to all of our staff and available online at the employee kiosk. A filing deadline for the W-2s to the IRS is January 31st, 2022. Um, and again, I have those upstairs in the box, picked them up this morning, so we're going to put them in the employee's mailbox and we're going to go with W-2s. Number three, uh, we completed our Affordable Care Act 1094-1095 filing, uh, our template one by Monday, December 1st, and then template two by Monday, January 3rd. Assured Answers um, is the vendor that helps us with that, and that's via Suburban Health Consortium, uh, free of charge, so they help us complete the Affordable Care Act filing that we have to do by law. Uh, number four, completed accounting, USAS, R. Uh, calendar year in 2021 procedures. So we did pre-closing procedures, we did month-end closing procedures, we did calendar year in closing. Uh, we completed our 1099 extracts by the due date for Neonet, which was January 14th. And our filing in the IRS, uh, filing information returns electronically, which stands for FIRE system, uh, using a transmitter control code, which we had to get that, that, this was a new procedure for this year as opposed to prior years. So we had to file our 1099s online to the IRS through what's called a FIRE account using a TCC code. Now to get this TCC code, we had to complete a, new, a number of forms and we had to wait several weeks, actually a couple months, to get that code back to be able to initiate a FIRE account. So a lot of hoops to jump through with the IRS just to build and be allowed to um, file by the due date that process. Uh, number five, complete payroll USPSR calendar year in 2021 procedures. So we had month end closing, quarter, uh, and closing. So we always balance to the quarter and we have to file 941 uh, tax forms uh, with the government. Um, and then we have to file uh, the business services online BSOW2 report by January 31st. Um, 
So I just, again, would like to thank Elixir Rodriguez and Kathy Martin for all their hard work. Rock stars, they did a great job. They did all of it. Um, so we were good to go. Uh, calendar year-end 2021 is complete. And I always get my years mixed up as we go from December to January because our school fiscal year is actually two years, a combination of like 21, 22. And I'm always looking back in the accounting, the fiscal 20 for a lot of stuff with our auditors. So I'm always mixing up 22, 21, 20. It's really hard to separate it as you go. Um, item 9B, um, just wanted to point out tax advances for everybody here. So if we open that attachment, the 2022 tax advance schedule that we have in place, um, this is from Cuyahoga County uh, Fiscal Office. So this attachment shows um, our tax advance schedule. So it's the entire year. So January 14th, which was last Friday, we got our first half uh, advance from Cuyahoga County. Then on February 15th, we're going to see our second uh, advance come from Cuyahoga County for our tax collections for that first half of the year. And then we have a settlement, which is the last payment, uh, March 15th. And then we have a second half collections for the fiscal year, which actually is going to be fiscal 23. So that's 7-15-2022, because again, 7 is 6 so this extends into fiscal 23. And then we have that second half settlement, August 15th. And we can see below in yellow, it says taxing authorities wishing to receive tax advances in 2022 must submit a resolution to the county board commission by December 31st, 2021. So if we exit out of this attachment, we open the next one that we have here. What that is, is that's the resolution that we passed. And if we look at our date, it was October 20th, 2021. So I bring this forward to the board every year around October. Uh, and doing this resolution, enables us to get these tax advances from Cuyahoga County. So we're getting our money quicker. We're getting it in January. We're getting it in February. And then we're also getting the remaining portion in March, as opposed to not doing this resolution, just getting everything in March as we go. Um, and then the last uh, item I have here, if we click on 114-22 tax advances for Cuy Cuyahoga County schools. This is interesting. This is every school in Cuyahoga County, what they're receiving and taxes. So take, you know, if you're ever bored and anybody wants to look at this, they can see all the schools in Cuyahoga County and how taxes, uh, property taxes come and are recorded. So um, we're in here too, but uh, if you were to look at a couple other schools, Lakewood, Brooklyn, they have a lot of levies and all those levies, the taxes come in in different streams of revenue. So if it's a bond fund, that has to get recorded in a separate fund than the general fund and so forth. So if, to account for all these different levies for some of these schools, it's very tricky as they go. Cleveland, Metropolitan, a lot of levies there too. So just wanted to leave this if anybody's you know, curious, um, if they have, you know, they want to dive into school finance, um, it's there. And then the last item tonight, um, item 9C, the Fair School Funding Plan. So Aaron Rausch had sent a message January 5th, and I included that message here. And Aaron Rausch is the director of the Office of Budget and School Funding at the Ohio Department of Education. And what's taking place right now is there's a new funding formula that was approved by the Ohio legislature. And uh, OD has been working behind the scenes to start this new funding uh, formula in January. And I have highlighted in orange the negative base state amount, um, where it says there are some districts that have negative base state funding amounts in column. A of the SFPR um, school funding payment report. We are working to fix this in future payments. Negative amounts will be set to zero and the difference applied to the base cost column. We are also in process of posting a spreadsheet that details the calculation of the funding bases and the guarantee amounts for each district. Uh, it should be available in the next week <coughs> or so. Uh, I have our attachments of our school finance reports, um, and I also have a, a school to compare us to, Independence. If we were to click on the attachment for us, Cuyahoga Heights Schools School Finance Payment Report, January 1st, 2022, and open that, that brings up what's online at the Ohio Department of Education for our state aid. And this, again, is the new funding uh, method, funding formula, um, that just started in January. And we can see I have uh, two rows highlighted, A and L. A is the base cost, and we have a negative there, negative 200 some thousand dollars in column A, and then 119,000 to the negative um, all the way to the right. And then we have our formula transition supplement at $350,000. So this just looked off to me, um, how they had calculated our base cost and the formula transition 
um, line as well. And I actually got a voicemail from the Ohio Department of Education the other day and shared that with everybody here where uh, she called and said that yes, in fact, how our state aid is calculated is incorrect. So I'm still, I'm gonna wait for them to correct it and share that with everybody here. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's accounting and I understand, you know, trying to create, you know, a new funding formula. And I told her on the phone for all 600 school districts, so things happen. But ours right now is not correct as we look at this report. And we're expecting higher money, more I don't, money? I don't, I don't know. She didn't have a sheet that she could share with me. She just told me that this one's wrong and they're working on it. So I'm kind of at the mercy of the Ohio Department of Education as they calculate. The uh, original base projection cost. was about 62000 more um, with the new funding formula. We, that was way back before they started to break it out. So that, that was the kind of ballpark number that we were given. Okay. They, they said no school would receive less funding. And so it was... I would say a negative is less than we got. Well, well, it was so a company, at least for them to recognize it and make a phone call to say, listen, yeah. we recognize there's an error. Please be patient with us. So, hmm. so okay. we'll, just, we'll look forward to see what happens. Yep. Um, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mochu. Appreciate the background. Uh, agenda item 10, Mr. Evans. All right. Superintendent's business. Uh, a, motion to approve the attached 2021-22 Supplemental position contract list for 2021-22 is updated January 19th, contingent by successful completion of BCI. FBI checks proper certification if applicable. B, motion to approve the attached, uh, attached list of student ra tuition rates for non-resident students grades pre-K through 12 attending Cuyahoga School during the 2022-23 school year. C, <clears throat> motion to approve the updated list of 2020-21 student fees as recommended per the attached list. Superintendent's business employment substitutes and volunteers. A, motion to approve the attached substitute teacher list for 2021-22 as updated on January 2022 by the Educational Service Center of Northeast Ohio. And B, motion to approve the employment of Katherine Baumgartner as a long-term substitute primary elementary teacher Effective uh, January 7, 2022, per the adopted salary schedule BA Step 1 during the 2021 22 school year as assigned contingent upon successful completion BCI FBI background back checks. I asked, uh, agreement? oh, sorry, again, agreements not here too. Uh, agreements, contracts, A motion to approve agreement with David Busters for the senior class 2022 class luncheon to be held May 26 at a cost of $2,406.27. B, motion to approve agreement with Vocational Services Unlimited for Cuyahoga Heights High School to be site option for VSU summer youth career exploration and work experience for summer 2022. C, motion to approve agreement with Cleveland Music Group for DJ services, uplighting and photo booth for prom 2022 to be held May 13th uh, at a cost of $2,249. D, motion to approve career and professional development partnership agreement between Baldwin Wallace University Master's Ed Program at Cuyahoga Heights School per the attached document. That's at no cost. <clears throat> and E, motion to approve a contract with Concord Theater Theatricals per the attached agreement for royalty rental recording and scripts for the school play The Sound of Music to take the place in March or April, 20, March or April 22 at a cost of $1,822.26 plus approximately $200 in shipping. I ask that those items be approved. Thank you. So we have a motion to approve the superintendent's consent agenda. Second. Ms. Shukert moves. Mr. Shachi seconds. Discussion? On uh, supplemental contracts, you see the attached sheet. That's the new sheet that uh, uh, we're going to try and use to see that we can do a better job of tracking so we don't have to have an emergency meeting to approve a, a supplemental contract. But uh, the intervention assistant team member, uh, Becky Pappas, is our, our nurse's aide in the elementary. There's times when she has to sit in on the IAT team meeting, so we want to make sure that she can be compensated for that. Open gym coordinator, this is a position we have not <coughs> filled in other years, but with the, with the increased use of the building after school, uh, really our, our, our kind of, as COVID-wise, our, our kids are here more, they're doing more things, and we want them here. So we need supervision here, and that's a position will help to supervise the weight rooms, the fitness center, and, and any open gym activities. Uh, uh, Miles Patterson is going to do that, and basketball scoreboard operator, 
Bryce Harwood. I think he's probably the third person that we've approved it. He's just a backup to the backup to the backup on that. So to make sure that we've got people to cover our scoreboard operation operations. Um, next item was the tuition, tuition. rates and uh, the, the tuition rates I'm, that I'm recommending were the same last year uh, with COVID with us being on remote learning uh, we went to the uh, if you remember correctly we went to all the tuition parents so we would lock them in for this school year to that price if they stayed with us and I think we in the end lost maybe one or two families because we went to remote uh, so we, we did this year I, I I'm recommending that we don't change them this year you know, we're still not out of COVID. We're still doing some things differently than what we might do. Um, um, we still have a waiting list for students to come in right now. And, and uh, the reason I'm asking for this now is that uh, we're trying to get the brochure printed with, with us not holding open house, that, com that community open house. We're gonna do more via flyers and I, want, I wanted to get the price in the flyers. So I apologize for bumping this maybe up and when we would have normally approved it, but I do wanna get it on the flyers that we send out because uh, right now, all the parochial schools are getting their information out as well. So, uh, on that, student fees. The ad there is the uh, the cost to replace damaged books. Uh, I got a question today. The last two years, we've waived any classroom fees for our students. Again, with COVID, we didn't know if labs were going to take place, so the board voted uh, prior to the school year to, to waive those fees. The fees that we've kept in place are might be 200 level account fees and and they had club fees, those type, like ski club fees, so those stay in place, but the actual classroom fees, we've waived those fees last year and this year, so that's why that shows up on the, on the sheet that way. Um, uh, the board has graciously waived those fees. And again, uh, I think Mr. Mucho has said that I think our collection on those is probably right in the $10,000 range, maybe even a little bit less on, on student fees in the past, so. Um, uh, substitute teacher list through the ESC. Uh, employment of Catherine Baumgartner, long-term sub. This is uh, uh, Catherine actually, uh, as I talked about, uh, uh, Hallie McPherson, she's also a BW student. I, I think Mr. Uh, Young said today that we, we were, we're maxing out on our number of BW graduates. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jantos wasn't very happy about that, being a BW alum, but, um, mm -hmm. uh, but, but also worked with Ann Cole. So uh, Ann sent me a, an email over the weekend just telling me how excited uh, Catherine is to come work for us. Uh, uh, there was a question that she had applied for her license that it, that license hadn't come through. We could still get her the emergency license that the state now has in place because of COVID. So she's going to be licensed one way or the other, but she has applied. She had applied for the license. So, and actually, this takes a big load off of Mrs. Houchin's shoulders to know that she has an art teacher teaching art because some of the people that have been summoned in the art room are not very artistically <laughs> oriented. So it's, it's been a little bit of a struggle. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so uh, Mrs. Houch is looking forward to that, oh. so. Um, Dave and Busters, uh, the senior class luncheon, we need to approve the contract now to hold that date for us. That's two, those are uh, senior class funds. Uh, vocational services, we've hosted the, the, uh, the summer the extended learning here, and our students attend that. We also bring some students in from other districts. They employ some of our, our ESC people, so that's been a pretty successful program for us for two or three years, so that's an agreement to continue on with that. Cleveland Music Group, that's the DJ and photo booth, which is actually, that's local, that's, a, that's an in-district uh, That's an in -district group, so that money stays in the district there. Career Professional Development Partnership with Baldwin Walls. This is with our master's program. This is no cost to us. Uh, the, the Baldwin Walls really is, is one of the universities that's reached out to us on uh, taking on student teachers, too, from time to time. Uh, if, we, if we get involved in this at a certain level, they'll, they'll provide uh, tuition discounts for our uh, staff would then try to get, take course with through, through BW, so. Hmm. Uh, and Concord Theatricals, the school play, the first play that I ate it at the board approved, um, uh, as the play came in, uh, it turns out that they couldn't cast the play based on the, st the student interest. They thought that they, with the limited number of kids that participate, I think Mr. Michaels kind of figured kids into parts and when they got the play here, some of those kids said, well, I don't want to play that part. So we were kind of left with with a play that we couldn't perform. So uh, he switched off to the sound of music here, um, which everybody should love, so. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean that we spent money on stuff? No, we did not, we, we didn't pay for the. We didn't have to pay we, for yeah, it. Yeah, no, but. 
So I ask for those items to be approved. Okay, uh, thank you for your time today. You answered a lot of my questions. I appreciate it. Um, I guess we can proceed to a vote then if there's no further discussion. Mr. Shuker. Aye. Mr. Suchaki. Aye. Ms. Prouse. Aye. Mrs. Zetter. Aye. Mr. Dobbins. Aye. The motion passes 5 0. We are now looking at agenda item 14. And that is, well, my system is slow tonight. Uh, I hereby move that the board adjourn to executive session pursuant to ORC section 121.22G1 for the purpose of considering the discipline of employees of the school district. Second. I'll second. Mr. Suchaki seconds. I don't think there's any discussion, so let's move to a vote, please. Mr. Dobbins. Aye. Mr. Suchaki. Aye. Ms. Prouse. Aye. Mrs. Shuker. Aye. Mrs. Eder. Aye. The motion passes 5-0. It is 8.34 p.m. and we are adjourned to executive session.
cowboy hat. <laughs> Because everything's black back there, it's hard to see. For sure. I think it's not. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So it is 8.54 p.m. and we are reconvening from an open session. Mr. Mucci, would you call the roll, please? Ms. Prouse. Uh, here. Mrs. Schuchert. Here. Mr. Suchaki. Here. Mrs. Etter. Here. Mr. Davis. Here. Five present, none absent. Uh, moving on to agenda item 15, uh, Mr. Evans. I ask that the board, uh, Accept the resignation of teacher Dave Pasica for personal reasons, effective at the end of the 2021 contract year, and further authorize the superintendent to execute documents attendant to Mr. Pasica's separation from employment. So we need to uh, have a motion supporting Mr. Evans' statement? I'll Correct. Make the motion to Ms. accept Mr. Evans' statement in regards to accepting the resignation of Dave Pasica. And I will second it. Mr. Chuchaki seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, let's move to a vote, please. Mrs. Schuchert. Aye. Mr. Suchaki. Aye. Ms. Prouse. Aye. Mrs. Etter. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. The motion passes 5-0. Moving on to agenda item 16, superintendent's comments. Mr. Evans. Uh, just to circle back around, you know, Mr. Muccio talked a lot about the grants uh, and, and the, the influx of grants, and he showed you the spreadsheet. Just so, just so you're aware, I, I'm going to send out a BASA update to you about some legislation. but. Grants are what the state is considering an increase in educational funding. So they're not increasing our base funding rate. So you're going to hear two different arguments coming out of Columbus. Uh, you're going to hear numbers, the percentiles that you say, well, that doesn't, that doesn't jive with what our district has got because it doesn't. So they're playing party games with, with uh, education um, reimbursement numbers. And one party saying, well, because you're getting all these grants, that's your increase in funding. And we know that grants aren't generally here to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so there's, there's some discussion about that. So that's been one side's approach to that. I, I want to say that uh, last week and this week, our attendance rates have been at 95 and 96 percent on our daily attendance rates. So things are really trending in a positive direction. And it looks like our staff's getting a little bit healthier, too. Mrs. Houchin told me she can now sleep at night that, uh, <laughs> that her staff are back in the building. So. Um, um, you know, we'll, hopefully we can continue that trend. And if it stays that way for another couple of weeks at the end of the month, maybe we'll talk about mass, but I'm not ready to talk, may have that discussion just yet. Um, uh, you'll get an extensive legislative update from me on Friday. It's a PowerPoint that BASA uh, uh, has sent out and, and with some pretty good explanations in it. Uh, the February work session, I reached out to David Seed. I asked David Seed to come for two reasons. David can, it, the, annually we'd like to have David back to talk about some of the property challenges, uh, the valuations but also about HB 126, which is gonna have a dramatic impact on it. And, and David was, and Matt uh, were on the forefront of uh, a Senate testimony down and, uh, and, and kind of delaying it. And if you remember correctly, this is the third time that this bill's come back and they, they finally kind of squeezed it through this year. So I'll, I want, I'll have David talk about the impact of that. Um, a lot of talk about SROs in the news lately. And, and the question I'm getting is, we, don't, we do not have an SRO. Uh, just a reminder that the um, uh, Cuyahoga Heights Police Department are here during our lunches. That's a voluntary thing. We don't pay for that. And now with us coming out of COVID, the villages are anxious to get back to rotating through. They each, they, they take a month in there, and which is really imperative now because we have so many officers in the three villages that are Cuyahoga Heights graduates. Before, they were always an alum, and they always knew where they were going. And they, anymore, they're, they're new, and they're young, and they're coming from a lot of different places. So it, it, it is nice, and I... I think when that initially started about four years ago, some people were like, why are the police walking through the building? And, and now the, with COVID, people are saying, why aren't the police walking through the building? And, and quite honestly, all three of our villages are, are in uh, tough are in police shortages right now. So that they're all, all of them trying to hire and, and fill their groups. So that, you know, they've, the mayors have assured me that that'll be back on, um, they'll resume those random walkthroughs. I want to mention when uh, Grace Gaelic was here, that uh, the good news last week is that the OHSAA approved sanctioned girls wrestling beginning next school year. So girls wrestling and boys volleyball will be safe. When Grace gets up to high school, she'll, she'll be able to wrestle. And they, there, are, there, are, there has been a state rest, girls state wrestling tournament. I, quite honestly, I've been a part of that because the coaches association sponsors it and I'm still a member. But when, when Grace gets to high school, she'll be able to wrestle in a girls state tournament. And, and that's, that's exciting news. Um, I think um, at last count there was over 500 female wrestlers in the state of Ohio right now. So it's uh, a certainly, certainly grown. And she's um, one to watch out for. Just yeah. Yep. Knowing her, watch out for Grace. 
a couple of the kids talked about uh, uh, the, their interest in technology, and, and I wanted to mention Mr. Wallace's left, but Mr. Wallace started his little technology internship group, and he's got a really kind of, he's got a great group of kids, and they reported to me last week that, that this week they were getting together and they were going to really, they were going to build their first computer. And I was one of the kids that bought all the pieces, parts to build. And, and if you know anything about the high level gamers, that's what they do. They build their own computers. They don't go out and buy a, a system. They, 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 they buy that. And so they were, he was really excited about the kids and the kids that are involved in that. So that's a real positive thing we've got going for some kids. My hat's off to the maintenance staff, Mr. Zerbola and the maintenance crew for just doing a tremendous job. And, and also the village, uh, you know, that snow was so deep that uh, you know our equipment couldn't handle it all, and we, quite honestly, we didn't have places to put it. So the village brought their front end loaders and helped us get snow over the fences, uh, so we could get lots cleared. So, um, and I sent Mayor Bocci, I, I sent Mayor Bocci a, a letter today thanking uh, for him and the council and for for uh, Mr. Sammons to thank him. And I know that how busy the village was too because they got stuck in Mrs. Hawkins' driveway about three times, uh, <laughs> this was, uh, trying to clear it. It, it was just. Yeah. And it, it was this this was tough because it was it was well over a foot but there was ice underneath too so it made plowing the driveways particularly hard so i i think we got off without a hitch today with the kids back in the building but uh um you know there, there are some mountains of snow that may be around for a while but hats off to to jim zerbo and his staff um one of the things that uh, that has come up is that uh, there's a mo there's a legislation right now to remove the cat tax and and what the cat tax is, the cat tax was put in place to cover the cost of the TPP phase out. So the recommendation is that they want to eliminate that tax and just continue the phase out through the general fund. Um, the group, you know, the Alliance for Quality Schools and a couple other groups we're parts of are lobbying to keep that cat tax because quite honestly we're lobbying as we have every year just to freeze the TPP phase out. We don't, it's obviously continued, it's, it looks like it's gonna continue, but that, that would be a very negative for us too because that, we don't want the legislature to get anxious about saying, okay, we're gonna go from here to zero right now, which they certainly have the power to do, that if they stick with the phase out, while it doesn't make us happy, it at least gives us, gives Mr. Muccio some uh, numbers that he can uh, build a budget off of moving into the future, so. Um, uh, again, the February 1st, 5th, uh, I'm gonna bring David in to talk about those things. And we're also gonna have uh, the people in that, that uh, whose scholarship helped fund our safe room. Um, I'll, I'll have a little bit and, and Tom talks about it, but it's a family out of Fairview. Their son uh, was an athlete at Fairview High School, seemed to be socially well adjusted, went to Baldwin Wallace College, was on the football team, and then committed suicide. Um, and and uh, as they look back and reflected, uh, they've kind of made it their mission to put these safe rooms, places for kids to be able to go during the day to decompress kids that are having a hard time. And it's it's there's a fish tank in there, there's a there's a pretty comfortable couch, there's a beanbag chair, so it's really very, Kind of a soothing room to be in and 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 uh so i've got something tom talks about this week but but we're gonna have them come and talk about you know just what their efforts and 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 we certainly appreciate because that was funded 100 percent by by this family and the, their and their foundation so uh, i'll have them there as well as well at the february 5th uh, award session so that's what i have thank you um, I'm looking at agenda item 17. It's board consent agenda. I don't know that we have anything that we need to approve tonight. Nothing so added. No. So there, no. Uh, I'm sorry. No, there wasn't anything added to that. So, so I'm going to move on to agenda uh, item 18, board discussion committee reports comments. And I would only note that there's a best committee meeting tomorrow evening. And uh, for those that are listening would like to attend. You're welcome to attend. No, nah. that's all I have. Oh, no, it's been canceled. Yeah, we with COVID we we put it on hold for right now. Oh, okay. So well, we I'm we didn't want to do it remotely. So we. We kind of put, kind of froze best right now, so. Fine. I don't think, I didn't get an email. Yeah, I didn't receive, that's, that's what I said. make sure everybody knows. Yeah, I thought Megan oh, okay. said, I'll double check. I, I well, thought Megan said on a notification. Well, as, as if Gary and I. Yeah. Yeah. It is you two? I, well, whoever wants to. Attend. No, it's whoever. Well, let, let me go back to, that's a good point. So the best meeting is canceled tomorrow night, Correct. so I take that back. Um, and then moving on to Mrs. Schuchert's comment, one of the items that's attached to uh, the organizational minutes, which was item Mr. Mochio's presentation. What is it up? Um, it would be item 6A, the organizational minutes 6A. The very last page of that is what we had discussed at the organizational meeting about committee assignments and things. 
if that has been penciled in. So if the board members are okay with that, we can kind of agree that it's final. But if there's any changes that need to be made, let's let's. Uh, so Vast is step Ms. Prowse and Mr. Suchan for Vast. Yes. Oh, okay. My my bad. Oh, really? I thought you were. Yeah, that's that, that's fine. Not no, no, I'm glad. You, no, 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 I'm glad you said that. No, that's I'm glad you said that. That's that's what we agreed to. So that's good. All right. Uh, Did you know that? Uh, yeah. Well, yes, yeah. you remember that? Okay. I, okay. I mind somehow. <laughs> With that background, are there any other uh, board members that have comments, questions? Mr. Shukert. No, I have not. Okay, Mr. Strat. Uh, just quickly. Um, and I can share more of this information next time, but uh, we have a schedule from the uh, Career Center of not only our meeting dates, but the presentations on those, those dates. So like half of our meetings have a presentation by a staff member. They come in with a, um, a PowerPoint and they tell us about their program and the changes they're making or some of their success stories and that sort of stuff. And we were, that came up because I asked for that about three years ago based on what we were doing here about four or five years ago before all of the insanity that we, we were dealing with. So we might want to talk about that again, having uh, teachers bring in special student projects or, or other presentations for the board so that we have a better idea. Well, that's the plan for the work sessions. Uh, and later on in the spring, uh, Mr. Fried, Dr. Fried's going to come in and talk to you about the MTSS position that we added last year to give you an update on that. And Mr. Jantovich and Mrs. How should know that we're gonna we're gonna bring some teachers and programs in. And we've always talked Science Olympia, and that's always a good one. But I I asked them to kind of reach outside the box a little bit, see if there's other some, some other interesting things going on, which there are in the in yeah. the in the buildings, and, and uh, talk. And also at the uh, an upcoming board presentation, the mascot committee will uh, will present uh, what the, the five final uh, what they've narrowed the five down to, and maybe what kind of order they had them into. But uh, I thought. We had a very good first meeting on Zoom, uh, a very productive, and the next meeting is the, coming up here in February, and, and I think if it continues to move in that direction, I think in two meetings it will, that that group will come up with a, a, a final five for the board to consider. Okay. Um, we also, at our past meeting, talked about the five-year academic plan. Um, there are new courses being investigated at the Career Center. They can't say, here's what our plan is, we're gonna start this course this year and this course that year because they're studying to figure out which courses will have enough participation to have value and therefore be put in there. And at the same time, you're talking about not just the high school, but the adult, right? You're frequently doing them together. So now you have to say, will the adult pay for itself? So um, it, it's more ROI, there's some ROI in there. They aren't just throwing things out on the table and say, oh, we have to teach this. And they want to talk to the industries and see what they need, too. So there's a study going on to add at least three academic courses, uh, courses of study, not just one class, uh, within the next five years. Dr. Lucas, Corey Taylor's wife, is going to uh, assist with their uh, research into a, a vet tech or an animal care program. Right, and that's they one of them. They talked about that in, in a... In, 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 I, in Cincinnati, the uh, the Cincinnati public is housed at the at the zoo, and uh, Dr. Lucas is heavily involved in, in the zoo activities here. And so mm -hmm. she she had, I talked to her. She's going to sit on that, and also uh, a former colleague of mine from Medina is going to help them uh, do some planning and some research into the animal care problem. Okay, good. So that is one of them. The other one that they're pretty sure they're going to try to work on, or they're working toward, is environmental, and then the third one is they're trying to figure it out. So that's what they're working on. Um, uh, I think that was the main uh, items that were on there. And then uh, I, I was uh, elected vice president again for this year. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all I have. Does that really have anything? Okay. Um, the only thing I had was my observation from Students of the Month tonight. And I, I so like it when they say they just love it here because of the staff and the students. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, Ms. Cross. Um, I just want to say thanks to everyone for their um, work on finding the long-term sub for the um, elementary art position. My daughter was very excited, and I just mm -hmm. think it's great that we have such a strong art program in the elementary and also in the um, older grades with the staff spotlight. So, yeah. great to hear. 
Very good. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 19, are there any future agenda items that people want to raise or discuss? Nothing right now, so I'm going to move on to agenda item 20. It should be noted that the Board of Education members received their agendas several days prior to the actual meeting, thus they have had considerable opportunity to study it, ask questions, etc. Upcoming meetings, uh, work session February 9th at 6 p.m., regular meeting 7 p.m. February 23rd, work session March 9th, 6 p.m., regular meeting March 23rd at 7 p.m. Moving on to agenda item 21. I hereby move that the Board adjourn to executive session pursuant to ORC section 121.22 G1 for the purpose of investigating complaints against a public employee or official. No action will be taken by the board. May I have a second? Second. Ms. Shukert seconds. No discussion, so let's move to a vote, please. Mr. Dobbins. Aye. Mrs. Shukert. Aye. Ms. Prowse. Aye. Mr. Suchaki. Aye. Mrs. Zetter. Aye. The motion passes 5 0. It's 9 10 p.m., and we are adjourning to executive session. You've been last every uh, throughout the, all the roll calls. I don't know why. I don't, because in, alphabetically, that because you're the vice president. Uh, I'm use restaurant. Is that why? Yeah, I've done last. Maybe. Well, I must be last. I must be last. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. This doesn't want to turn off. Why doesn't this want to turn off? Well, we will come back. Yeah.